I've been thinking about how when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull their legs in to let you by. And how strangers still say, bless you when someone sneezes, left over from the bubonic plague. Don't die, we're saying. Sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly we don't want to harm each other. We have so little of each other now. We're so far from tribe and fire. Mostly we don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our coffee hot and say thank you to the person who handed it. For them to smile at us and us to smile at them. For the waitress to call us honey as she sets down the bowl of clam chowder. And the driver in the red pickup truck to let us by. We have so little of each other now. We're so far from tribe and fire. Only these moments of exchange. What if they were the true dwelling of the holy? These brief temples we make together when we say, Here, have my seat. Go ahead, you first. Hey, I like your hat. We have so little of each other now. We have so little of each other now. We're so far from tribe and fire. That's a piece of writing from Danusha Lameris. Um, and when I discovered it, I just put it to music. And so thank you. Thank you, Danusha. Uh, it um, just uh, really replenished me when I read that. And it um, also... I, I felt it really relieved me of a burden that I didn't know I was carrying. Um, the burden of the big issue. And it just brought me back to the small, small, sacred, small but not trivial moments of exchange. And you can see all these big issues uh, man, I know they're important, but sometimes it's like everyone's shouting at each other about how to save the planet. And sure, that's an important question, saving the planet. But I don't know, sometimes I wonder, does the planet really need saving? Or if it does, your evangelical intensity of proposition of how to save the planet, I wonder if, I don't know, there's some unintended costs and consequences that might come along with that. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And that's just it. I don't know, right? So it gets overwhelming. Big issues. Big, big issues. And sometimes I feel like so much, mm, so much um, of the emphasis is on having your passionate point of view. Have a point of view put it out there and that's great but I wonder sometimes the passionate point of view overshadows something else that's important which is like I don't know knowing what you're talking about <laughs> I don't want to be overcritical because every, you know it's you know we're all working it out together right so I get that it's just that I don't know seeing myself I'll just talk about me sometimes I just grab the 
I just grab the, the the newest shiny rhetoric and I just go with it, or the the rhetoric that confirms my my view, and I just go yeah. And the justice driven ideologue within me just grabs it and goes yes. Truth is, I really don't know what I'm talking about. So people are slogging it out, and and that's cool. That's okay. Sometimes we've got to slog it out. We've got to slog it out. But I just was so relieved at reading this beautiful piece about, you know, when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull their legs in to let you by. It's beautiful, right? It's a big issue. You know, it doesn't require any outrage and furious debate. Well, it could. It could. I mean, anything these days could... <laughs> Anything these days could go into that territory, right? Pull your legs in to let people buy. Yeah, that's right. Give them space. Just like we should be giving space to the refugees. Let them buy. Let them in. What? Let the refugees in? What, are you kidding? No. It's not a theatre. It's a country. There's not room for everyone. What do you mean? There is room. But they don't have a ticket. They don't have a ticket. Yeah, they can't afford a ticket. Not like you, with your privilege. Ah, communist. Uh, fascist redneck. <laughs> it's just like, you can tell that I've been on, I've been on Twitter too much. I'm too much on social media. I just, it's addictive. I mean, I don't spend a huge amount of time on it. I actually don't. But every now and again, I just kind of, just kind of go there. And it's like, I kind of like it. I sort of kind of like that. It's like so. I truly see value in it. I don't. I I'm glad that Twitter's there. I'm glad. I'd much rather it be there than not. I don't know where it's headed. I know it's very very fraught, and you know I think there's a lot of illness that can flow out of it but I don't know I'm kind of glad it's there and slogging things I think we do need to slog things out sometimes but that's not all we need we also need poetry my justice driven ideologue says poetry poetry is not going to fix the world and my poet says yeah that's why we need it because it doesn't fix, it names and it reveals, brings us home into something, changes our relationship with the world. We have so little of each other now, so far from tribe and fire. And these moments of exchange. Hey, you, after you. Yeah. Hey, I like your hat. The holiness in those moments brings us back to tribe and fire. Tribe and fire. Maybe it's not as far away as we think. I, I, I found that very hopeful. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Um... Press the like button if you like. It does help the channel. Um, and, um, yeah, all the best to you on your human journey. See you next time.